It's that time again, folks. It is Relsh Framework. If you have not seen my earlier Relsh Framework video, that may be because I haven't posted it yet. Um, sometimes there is a swip swap between post. Like, I believe I posted Jet Update before I posted Relsh 101 or vice versa. And in one, I mentioned the other being created later on, even though the one that's supposed to be created on was posted first. That seems to happen sometimes. So if the Nightwing um, Relsh Framework is not out yet, then you have no idea what Relsh Framework is. Okay, pretty much I do what I did in my Real Life Superhero 101 video. Um, it's called Relsh 101, R-L-S-H. And pretty much what I did in that was I broke down everything that was a part of becoming a real-life superhero, determining what kind of suits you wanted, what kind of gadgets you wanted, etc. And then I apply it to a comic book superhero. So after it's been applied to a comic book superhero, um, I name it out to you. And I name it out using pretty much replacements for things that are more affordable or actually exist. Even though Batman is centered to be relatively realistic, sometimes they have technology that is a little over what we currently have, maybe estimated five years into the future, so some of the things don't work like that. Also, the whole Batarang conflict that I have, where pretty much if someone has Batarangs, I have to think about how they use the Batarangs. Now, I've seen them use them in the comics, because Batarangs change from ninja stars to boomerangs very randomly so I either have to name two gadgets or I have to figure out some kind of compromise or figure out what is it used as the most and then just stick with that um, I try to be as non-lethal as possible so even though characters use shurikens I do not advise the use of shurikens there's an alternative which you will learn in this video and learn in my other framework videos that I will be doing um, this may have been posted before Nightwing Framework, but I wanted to add something to Nightwing Framework. I reveal in that video that I not only have the Batman Encyclopedia, which you may or may not be able to see next to me. Um, the Batman Encyclopedia is where I get my information from, so I apologize if there's anything that is inside of the comics that is not actually in the framework, which you would be surprised, because even though this is DC license approved, which I know you can also not see because my leg is in the way, um, it lacks things that are in the comics, like for example, Nightwing's grapple is completely unmentioned in this, the fact that he even has a grapple, and that's messed up, because, I mean, whether or not we see it a lot, because I notice we just see Nightwing jump from building to building a lot of times. I've seen him use it in the comic, no matter how rarely it exists. And you think in an encyclopedia they would put that. So, they'll miss a few times, um, a few things. And if I personally don't read the comic, then um, I will also miss a few times too. So, I do the best I can with what I have. Today's is going to be Encyclopedia 64 to 65. And, um, here's what I wanted to say from the Nightwing video. In the Nightwing video, I told you that I have the X-Men Encyclopedia as well as the Batman Encyclopedia, but I have not read the X-Men Encyclopedia. And I told you that I would create a framework for it, like if you requested a specific X-Men character. And you may be thinking, oh, he's about to cop out, he's about to say no. Um, I'm not about to say no, but in the Nightwing video, I said I would put it to a technological basis where I take the ability that they have and I tried to find the closest um, technological version of it and I decided that because I'm a paranormal superhero what better thing for me to do personally than to make a paranormal tutorial on how that ability can actually be used and how it can be used on astral earth for paranormal crime fighting so that has given me a whole new reason to crack open the X-Men Encyclopedia and do one of these frameworks. Because once you learn the basics of energy manipulation, any superhero power that you can tell me, I can figure out a technique in energy manipulation that's based off of the rules of how it works, how you would then use that ability. 
and a lot of people who are in the energy community don't really feel like that's the best way to go if you haven't tested it then really you shouldn't say that it will work or it will not work but we all create and test techniques based off of the same parameters of how the techniques work so even if I haven't tried using magnetic abilities that doesn't mean that um, I can't think of a way to make magnetic abilities work hint hint request magneto anyways um and I already have a good idea of how you would do Iceman because I have a huge interest in cryokinesis and I've used it a few times before I also have um, not only experience in psychic abilities but I studied magic a lot when I was being mentored by Foxfire and um, I could give you magic spells that emulate what is going on with superpowers and really give you a framework for becoming a paranormal superhero based off of the X-Men so again really excited about that I'll probably be doing X-Men framework videos very soon but right now we have to focus on spoiler I've taken enough time already um, suit type is armored with Kevlar again it's kinda like um, Nightwing except Nightwing was unspecified but what I'm trying to say is Nightwing's was aesthetic to where um, no I'm not saying it was aesthetic again it was unspecified it looked like it could just be a suit but it could have armor and the way spoilers is you would have no idea that there's any armor whatsoever but the book specifically says that it is an armored suit and then it uses Kevlar but it looks like a cloth suit so it looks aesthetic even though it is armored mass type functional with night vision just like Nightwing again Nightwing's mask looked aesthetic but then they told you that it specifically had night vision which means that it's functional which means you would use night vision goggles not an aesthetic mask combat gadgets unlike Nightwing spoiler has way less combat gadgets and it's more or less about um, the theatrics and stunning than she really is um, using boom pow kind of things her combat gadgets are batarangs, which I automatically relate to predators from the men who stare at goats. Pretty much predators are the ultimate non-lethal weapon, and you can find them online. You can buy them in many different materials. And I believe there's also a design online, so if you know how to cut materials, you can find the most useful material for you and actually cut the materials in the shape of the predator and have your very own predator made out of whatever material you cut it from. I'm very excited to try that, and I may try that very soon and share it in a video. Let's see. Um, after combat gadgets, we have stun gadgets, where she has flashbangs. The problem is, flashbangs are not very open to the public, but you can buy bangs. Um, bangs are pretty much flashbangs, but they don't flash. They just go boom. And, of course, we have flashers, which is um, a technology that's pretty much a light that flashes a lot but it's also very bright so it's not just you know a little itty bitty flashing light as much as it's a kind of a disc light thing and it flashes very brightly repeatedly in someone's face and it can be very disorienting and annoying and blinding because it's a blindingly bright light never pointed at someone for fun Anyways, um, gas capsules. Gas capsules relate into two things for me. Flower bombs, which are pretty much you take a thin sheet of plastic wrap, pour a little bit of flour on it, then you tie it off with a twisty tie, and you make sure you tie it tight, but not too tight where it will just burst in your um, tool belt. You have it just tight enough to where when you throw it down, um, the bag will break, and the flower will expand into a cloud of smoke that you can then use to your advantage and stink pellets which I have not mentioned before but pretty much you can find those on Amazon for a pretty cheap price and you get about 50 vials they're actually built the way that you see um, smoke pellets built as these little vials and when you throw them down gas escapes but the gas that escapes from a stink pellet is obviously not gas you'd really want to breathe in. It's gross. 
and it's pretty much similar to the disorienting gas that I see Batman throw. And you're like, disorienting gas, what's that? Well, it's not knockout gas, and it's not just a smoke pellet. It's where he throws a smoke pellet, and instead of just a smoke screen coming up, it's a smoke screen, but they're also coughing, and they don't really seem like they feel well. Like, they go from, like, just normal face to, ah. And, um, you know, I've seen him use smoke pellets before, where the people don't have adverse effects. They don't kind of cringe from it. They more or less just are like, whoa, you know, smoke, where'd that come from? So, that's why I added stink pellets to the list. Storage. Uh, Spoiler uses a tool belt. You can find those very easily with different compartments. Um, her contact is a radio comm link, which can easily just be a phone with a headset, or a handheld radio, or a radio headset. So, you can go many different ways with that, whatever is the most convenient to you. And her transportation is quick and simple. They're D-cell jump lines. And I translated that into walking or public transportation, because most real-life superheroes are not on rooftops like that. They are normally on the ground, and if you are on a rooftop, you probably got up there, not using a grappling hook, but using a ladder or something. Just climb back down the ladder. You know, D-cell jump lines aren't very useful in real life, depending on who you're fighting. I would have to say. Um, for the Nightwing framework, I had a wish list at the end where I told you how many of each thing, and I'm kind of about to do that now, but I didn't write down the wish list, so I'm more or less going from what I just said and repeating it in order without having to say a full description. Armored suit with Kevlar, functional night vision goggles, um, how many predators should you have? You should probably have at least five. That's saying that um, spoilers belt may only have one mini battering compartment, but seeing how she has an entire tool belt and she only has so few gadgets, she may have up to ten predators. Not sure. That's ten batarangs, and then in real life they'd be predators. Um, she uses flashbangs, which for you would be bangs and flashers. I do not know exactly how many of those you would have. I'd probably say about three bangs and um, two to four flashers. And then for gas capsules, you'll have, um, I would say, three or four flower bombs. And for stink pellets, I would only carry like two or three. Even though you get a pack of 50, for one, how often are you going to use the stink pellets? And two, I would be really afraid of the possibility of me breaking a stink pellet in my tool belt and the fact that they're glass files and they're very fragile. I'd probably put some kind of material around them, which would probably make it a little bit harder for you to get them out when you needed them, but hopefully you'll be planning a distraction when you're not right in the middle of something. Uh, storage is a tool belt. Contact would be a phone with headset, or a handheld radio, or a um, radio headset. Transportation would be walking or public transportation, and that's your wish list. Go out there and create your own spoiler framework. You can derive from the framework itself, and you can change the framework itself. It's up to you. This is made as a starting point in case you want to create a real-life superhero identity for yourself that is based upon an already existent fictional superhero, or if you're having trouble thinking of your own real-life superhero identity, and you use these frameworks as inspiration to see what you can do with it. Another video that's very helpful is Real Life Superhero 101, which is RLSH 101. That's also on my YouTube account. All these framework videos are based around that, and the information found from the Batman Encyclopedia, which is... Uh, released by DK and has archives from the DC Comics. Uh, anyways, um, love this book. My next framework video is unknown to me because I don't know whether or not I want to jump into X-Men yet and do explanations with paranormal abilities or if I want to 
really do a psychic real life superhero 101 video first or if I just want to do a basic energy manipulation video first which I could do a whole series simply based off of energy manipulation there's so much you can learn um hmm. anyways this is Jeb Black real life superhero logging off um before I go when I mentioned a bunch of real life superhero websites last time I left out one, but I kind of referenced it a little bit. The Underground Justice League Alliance has a website, but the name escapes me. Of course, you can find that website most likely by going to their Facebook page, which is Underground Justice League Alliance. They have a lot of cool information, and they post on um, pretty much different technology that you may or may not know about that our government is using. Um, they really have a lot of information on different science things that are going on. But they're also real life superheroes. And they have patrol videos, but they don't really have video patrols as much as they have slideshow patrol videos. Photos from their patrols with um, subcaption text, but really epic music that they take from the Dark Knight movies. And those are enjoyable to watch. Anyways, this is Jeff Black, Real Life Superhero. Logging off.